day, beautiful people. How are you? I hope that you are all safe wherever you are. I also hope that you already watched our previous video on metacognition, you know, and finally had the understanding on it. Today, we are going to deal with the part two of chapter one in our course, and that is Learner-Centered Psychological Principles, or LCP. So this is a pre-recorded lecture prepared for all students enrolled in Prof. Ed 5, Facilitating Learning, Centered Learning of the College of Teacher Education, of Sky State University, Bambang Campus. Our objectives for this particular lesson are the following. One, explain the 14 principles. And number two, advocate the use of the 14 principles in the teaching learning process. Our premise would be the learner is the center of instruction. Or in other words, or in other statement, we say that the world of instruction revolves around the learner. I have mentioned in our previous video that it is always the learner that are considered the center of instruction. Sila ang bida, okay? Learner. So, they are the center of instruction. That when we are going to design our lesson and assessment activities, we always consider our learners, no? Our learners. See how important the learners are. This goes also with the 14 principles that I am going to present to you today. Okay. So, the 14 learner-centered psychological principles were put together by the American Psychological Association, which pertain to the learner and the learning process. So, it is divided into four factors. Apat na factor ito, no? So, we have the cognitive and metacognitive, this one. And we have at least six principles involved. We also have the motivational and affective factors with three principles. We have the developmental and social factors with, again, three principles. And the individual difference factors, that is two principles. No. <clears throat> okay. Let's start discussing the principles of Learner Center Psychological, yeah, and we'll start with the cognitive and metacognitive factor. Okay. Number one principle is nature of the learning process. The learning of a complex subject matter is most effective when it is an intentional process of constructing meaning from information and experience. So, I would like you to emphasize give your emphasis on two keywords no we have here the constructing meaning and intentional process these two okay let us look into these two keywords deeper no okay let's take up intentional process intentional process happens when one is not forced to learn or do something. Okay. Hindi siya pinipilit gawin ang isang bagay. Because if it, not, if, it, if it is not what you want to do, no? Kung hindi ito yung gusto mo, what will happen? The process of learning will not be that smooth as, is, as expected from an education student. Like you, no? So, if the thing that you are doing is not intentional process, like, you are enrolled in CTE, but you do not like education as the course, no? So, whatever that we are giving to you, the activities, the lessons, okay, will not be enjoyable by you, and you will not become effective because, in the first place, you do not want the course, no? So, basically, another example here, intentional process happens in the classroom, no? 
teachers come to class prepared. Okay, that is that is a no. That is given, and that should be no. Teachers come to the classroom ready. No. He has already planned the subject matter ahead of time. Right? Tama yun. So, since the beginning, he planned all the activities. He already designed the syllabus and course outline or playlist, like what we are doing. No? He already planned his objectives in every subject matter. He designed the strategies to pass on the learning. His assessment activities, no, and approaches he will use in delivering the lesson. And when comes when he comes to the classroom, he already knows what to do and how to do things. No? It's because it was planned earlier. So in this case, learning is intentional. So it can be easily what you call this one? It can be easily facilitated. Okay? Because the teacher is ready. Okay. Another keyword that I would like you to remember is constructing meaning. This means that as a teacher, we design lessons with objectives, activities, strategies. That what allows students to learn in their own unique way. Okay. They are allowed to participate also. We don't need to feed the students or the learners everything. Okay, because as I have said in the previous lecture, our role as teachers would be facilitators of learning. We are tasked to help learners use their knowledge, their skills, their talents to become better learners or become a better human, become a better person. No? We help them strategize and try different approaches and strategies no? to learn. In this case, we are allowing them to construct meanings of their own. So, we are allowing them to become constructivists. No? So, this alone will allow them to construct meaning and become creators of knowledge. So, it helped them become constructivists, as I have said a while back, and help them to become successful learners. No? When can we say that a learner is successful? No? So, number one, the learner is active. Active siya. No? Active ba kayo? Yun ang tanong. An active student take part in the teaching and learning process. No? So, what should you do? During the lecture, an active learner recites. He talks when called. He listens. He takes down notes. He participate in all class activities and collaborate with the teacher and his classmates. Not only with the teacher, but also he collaborate with his classmates. No, he participates in everything, in all group activities. He shares his thoughts about the lesson. He gives suggestions, recommendations, or post questions when something is unclear. No, are you this kind of student? Do you do this? Do you participate? Do you give questions, suggestions, recommendations? Do you recite? Do you listen? Do you take down notes? So I told you that even if we are not meeting face to face and we are just doing it virtually, you need to participate actively, no? You need to take down notes. You ask questions during our orientation or our, our consultation hours. And give your recommendations and reactions about the lessons. If there is something that is unclear, then you tell me. No, that is that is what you call collaboration. No, so this modality should not hinder you to become an active learner. No, that's what I'm always telling you. Okay, let's move on. Number two goal is or number two proof that one is a successful learner is goal oriented. Learners should set goals for themselves. So, ang sabi ko nung ating orientation, dapat meron kayong layunin or goal every day, every meeting, every week. So that at the end of the semester, you will not be stressed, right? So, we have long-term and we have short-term goals, which are equally important, no? Don't ever tell me that the short-term goals quite important or, yeah, important than the, than the, Long-term goal, no, they are 
both important. So, like you, you have goals, right? You have their long-term and short-term goals. So, I am sure at this moment, because you are, I guess, third year, yeah? I am sure that your goal is to become someone, and that someone is to become, is an educator. You want to become a teacher. Since you are here in the College of Teacher Education, correct me if I'm wrong, no? So, along with that long-term goal that you have set, are the short-term goals that you need to achieve. May mga short-term goals, short goals din kayong kailangan gawin to what? Help you achieve your bigger goals. No? If, you come, if you want to become a teacher, what should you do? You have to pass all your subjects in your education unit no? or your, in all your subjects offered to you by the university. So, every learner's short-term goal is seeing significance in every lesson. So, you always see or set a goal in every lesson and see the significance to you, no? So, do I need this course? Do I need this subject for my long-term goal? So, I guess all of the lessons that are being presented to you are needed in or order to achieve your bigger goal, okay? So, you need to learn, to understand, to participate, and that you should be your goal in your every subject or every lesson should be should be your goal in every lesson and every subject is seeing significance of it in realization of your bigger or long-term goal. Okay, another one, this one, self-regulating. No? A successful learner is self-regulating. So in my previous lecture, again, I have talked about phases of metacognition that includes monitoring. No, So a self-regulating learner knows how to monitor his progress so he also monitors and evaluates the strategies used kung ito ba ay effective or not so if it not if it is not effective then you should do again another strategy so you have to look into it if the strategy that you've used is effective or not so he is focused all the time so a successful learner is self-regulating because he is focused all the time on his goal or and to become an active part of the teaching and learning process okay let's move on number two principle is goals of the learning process so, a while back is a while back i have discussed to you about the goals no now you have to i uh, know you have to establish also the goals of the learning process itself no so it says here that the successful learner over time and with support of instructional guide can create meaningful coherent representations of knowledge so here with support of instructional guidance okay if it happens you can create meaningful coherent representations of knowledge let's look into it so as teachers what should we do we need to help our learners to their own learning goals so we have to help them establish their own goals too no like what i have discussed earlier short-term goals are as important as the long-term goals every lesson prepared should be what designed with goals that the learners and you as an educator should achieve so if there is a goal for your students there is also a goal for you as a teacher no and your goal is to what create a holistic individual out of your learners right we also need to see to it that we link or connect the shorter goals shorter goals or short-term goals to the long-term goals we help them achieve it through assisting them with instruction no so because your long-term goal is to become an educator or become a teacher all the subjects offered for you have connection or linkage with becoming an educator so all the topics taught in every subject will help you achieve your long-term goal these topics will be will serve as your reviewer when you take the let and when you teach when you are in an actual classroom you will always remember that oh i have learned this one from mom ash i have learned this one from my professor so i would uh, know start it start the lesson through quoting them no so that's great 
So remember, I repeat again that all the topics that is being taught to you now have connection or link with your achievement of the long-term goal that you have. So remember, you help your students to identify their goals. It's very important. Okay? I hope that you got it. Let's move on. Number three principles under cognitive and metacognitive factor is construction of knowledge. The successful learner can link new information with existing knowledge in meaningful ways. So here, the successful learner can link. Very important. What is that that he needs to link? The new information with the existing knowledge. Kung ano yung alam niya, dapat alam niyang i-connect doon sa bago niyang kaalaman. Okay. Remember that learners should be connected. Okay. They are they should not be isolated, no? So, our learners learn from his environment. He learns from other people. He learns from the books. He learns from what the teacher is teaching, right? So, if this is the case, our learners learn a lot with their own experiences. No? So, what should you do now? Because of this, it is your task then to what? As their teacher, you connect, you try to connect or to link these new learnings that they acquired from their previous learnings to the new learning that you are introducing to them. Because an individual is shaped because of the environment. So, malaking factor kasi yung nakikita niya, yung nalalaman niya sa internet, okay? Yung sarili niyang experience. So, dapat alam mong iugnay lahat ng lesson sa buhay din niya, no? So, maybe... You can use this one, concept mapping, thematic organization, or categorizing, no? You can use graphic organizers and other methods to link these new knowledges with what they already knew. So, it is also called the integration of knowledge. If you do this, then you will be able to link him from the past lessons to the new. So, merong, merong ano, alam mo yun, yung tuloy-tuloy ang pagdaloy ng knowledge sa kanya. Okay. For one. For four principles, strategic thinking. We're still on cognitive and metacognitive factors, no? The successful learner can create and use a repertoire of thinking and reasoning strategies to achieve complex learning goals. So again, always remember that learning can be enhanced when the teach we the teachers assist the learners in developing, applying, monitoring, and evaluating or assessing their strategic skills. There are instances no, in a classroom that students complain a lot. They complain a lot, actually. Sometimes, when we give a certain activity or an assessment activity to them, they tend to comply first. Bakit? Why? Because... Instead of thinking first of the possible strategies or methods that they have to use in accomplishing the task, what, what do they do? They think of the complexities, no? Like, they think on how to acquire materials. Do they have fans? No? How are they going to do the process? No. Or, they think of the time allotment. Tama ba? Kasya ba yung orals? Kaya ba ng fans? Or anong gagawin? Diba? So, these are the first things that you think about and not the strategies or methods that they have to use. So, that maybe there is limited time in doing in doing such, kaya na, na tawag natin dito, nag-aalal din sila, nag-aalala sila. Baka hindi, ta, hindi kasi yung oras, hindi kasi yung pera, or hindi ko alam ang prosesong gagawin. So, but then, this strategy here is telling us that a successful learner should not complain, no? So, students can do it, do all the activities or tasks given to them if they think of themselves as strategic learners, meaning they can find ways because they have the brains, they're intelligent, and they can do it. So, strategic thinking, this one, Strategic thinking is very important to overcome your weakness too as a learner. So, I'll give you an example. If you are tasked to 
stage a play, no? And you know well that you are very shy and introvert. You know that you cannot easily stand in front of the people. So how much more if you are asked to act, right? Or you are asked to deliver a speech, maybe. So maybe the best thing that you do here is to act or you talk in front of the mirror every day. No? So practice your line while looking at yourself and then gradually you get out. Maybe you ask your closest friends to listen to you. And then this might open now the door for you to act in a wider audience. No? So you always think that, oh, I am a learner and I can think strategically. I have my ways and I can do it. Okay? So that's what the meaning of the fourth principle. Next one. The fifth principle is thinking about thinking. So I've already discussed this with you in the metacognition video. This is the metacognition that we have been talking about, no? So this was the subject actually in our first video. So higher order strategies for selecting and monitoring mental operations facilitate creative and critical thinking. So again, students should what? Develop their abilities to monitor their own learning and assess their strategies. In, of learning if it is effective or not so critical thinking you can do it no so thinking about thinking the things that you are doing every day you are not aware but you are performing what you call metacognition no if you are planning and then you keep on monitoring yourself or changing your answers using other strategies then you are practicing thinking about thinking Okay, let's move on to the next principle. This here, context of learning. Learning is influenced by environmental factors, including, ito na, culture, technology, and instructional practices. No? As educators and facilitators, I repeat the words, no? Educators and facilitators of learning, no? We should be aware of the principle of diversity, yung pagkakaiba-iba. We will tackle this one in chapter 2, actually, the diversity in the classroom. So, the principle of diversity is that no two individuals are exactly the same. Walang dalawang tao magkaparehas na magkaparehas at saktong-sakto. We should be guided then by the concept of individual differences that our learners come from various race, from different cultures, different languages, different indigenous groups, no, etc., etc. They have different gender uh, orientation too, right? So if it is the case, we educators and facilitators, or fondly we call ourselves teachers, should be sensitive with the culture of our students. We should learn their cultural background so as to avoid discrimination because sometimes, even if it is not intentional, we, 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 uh, no, we tend to discriminate them. Why? Because we go overboard. No? And sometimes, we tend to joke. No? And then we do not know that these certain individuals being hurt by our words. No? So, what we, need is, what we need to do is to accept and respect everyone's differences. Even if he is able or disabled or coming from different cultures, we have to respect and accept them. So, learning is also influenced by technology, this one. Especially today. Kayo, mga, mga Gen Z kayo, right? So, you are, you are living in the technological world, no? in the modern world. So, as a teacher also, we should be aware that everything is readily available online now. So, we should maximize technology to boost learning, to improve learning. So, whatever we do for instruction, always remember that what really matters most is the quality of our teaching. So, learning does not occur in a vacuum. The classroom has a great role in the teaching and learning process. So it's because there is no classroom now. Of face to face, no, the actual classroom, at least 
we still have the virtual classroom. So I still hope that we maximize the use of this technology or this modality to boost to boost palette, to boost the learning or the teaching process. Okay. I hope that you got it. So those are the six principles under the cognitive and metacognitive factors. Now, let's move on with the second factor that is the motivational and affective factors. These are factors in, that includes intrinsic motivation or those coming from within, the reasons for wanting to learn, personal goals, and enjoyment of learning. So these are the ano, ano, yung nararamdaman mo about learning or yung, yung opinion mo about learning. Are you enjoying it or not? Do you want it or not? No. So can you feel it or not? No. So let's get down to the first principle. And this is now the seventh principle of the LCP. Okay. It says here, there are factors these are factors includes intrinsic motivation or those coming from within so i repeat no na for those coming from within these are the reasons of wanting to learn or personal goals and enjoyment of learning so motivation motivation is the key player in sustaining the teaching and learning process so it fuels us to go on it fuels us to go on so, wait lang, napindot ko na yung susunod, no? I'm sorry. Let's continue here, this one. So, if a learner is motivated, if a learner is motivated to learn, no? Or to listen, he will never find the task difficult. Diba? Kaya nga, pag namamotivate tayo, tawag natin dito, hindi tayo nabobor sa isang lesson. Diba? Tama yun. So, motivation is needed to sustain and influence the Emotional state of our learners. So, if he is motivated, then he will be open with new learnings. We should design and adapt interesting activities. Okay. So, remember, remember that we should always find ways to motivate them through preparing activities. Okay. Even assessment activities. No that they will be using in order to uh, find the new learning as enjoyable as it is. So that's it for number one, motivational and affective factor, the seventh principle that is motivational and emotional influences on learning. I repeat, that is the motivational and emotional influences on learning. Now, let's move on with number eight principle this is the intrinsic motivation to learn it says here the learners of creativity higher order thinking and natural natural curiosity all contribute to motivation to learn intrinsic motivation is simulated by task of optimal novelty and difficulty relevant to personal interest and providing for personal choice and control so how are we going to sustain their curiosity to learn no so if they are motivated no they become curious also no it goes together so we should again like what i have said in our last video attend to their individual differences and listen to them no listen to their questions attend to them in order to keep them curious to learn we give them activities or tasks that is meaningful and appropriate for everyone. Walang pinipili, hindi pwedeng para sa madunong lang, no? So, we keep on trying strategies that motivates them well, okay? While achieving high standards of our learners' comprehension and understanding of the lesson. So, while giving them activity, we find ways also that this activity should be linked with their standards of learners comprehension their comprehension and of course their understanding to the lesson that is why we are giving them activities to boost their learning skills no and to understand the lesson more okay the ninth one the next principle is effects of motivation on effort okay it says here acquisition of complex knowledge 
and skills requires extended learning, learner effort, and guided practice. Without learner's motivation to learn, the willingness to exert this effort is unlikely without coercion. So, kailangan guided practice ang motivation nila ay sinasabayan mo yun ng effort to guide them, to facilitate the lesson to them, to facilitate the activity. So, effort is an important indicator to or of motivation. So, it's up to you to prepare all the activities, to prepare all the lessons. Because, sabi ko nga kanina, a teacher should enter the classroom prepared, no? So, <clears throat> we spend time to plan and design activities that are purposeful to every learner. So, I repeat again, every learner, no? Yung effort natin ay dapat sa lahat ng learner, okay? Every learner. And that's it. Every learner, no? We decide on this strategy also to be used in order to improve learners' perception and to sustain their curiosity. So, again, it calls for different strategies to what? To sustain their curiosity and at the same time, their motivation to learn. Okay. Let's move on with the development and social factors. Okay. Third factor na tayo. And we are on the 10th principle. First principle under this is <clears throat> what? Developmental influence on learning. Okay. So, as individuals, as individuals develop, there are different opportunities and constraints of learning. So, habang nagde-develop or lumalaki ang isang individual, nagkakaroon ng opportunities. Mas, may mga gusto siyang matutunan at meron din yung ayaw niya niya, yung constraints for learnings. Nakikita na niya ng may mga mahirap na, okay, nagre-reklamo na siya, and it opens also the door for him for new learner learnings, no? Learning is most effective when differential development without and across physical, intellectual, emotional, and social domains is considered. So, it's not only the physical or the mental na dinedevelop natin lahat. So, EQ, IQ, parehas lang yan. Sabi nila, pag mataas ang EQ niya, mababa ang IQ. Pag mataas ang IQ, mababa ang EQ. There might be truth behind it, but as a facilitator of learning, we should try to develop that learning, learner, what? Holistic, or he develops everything, no? Not only con concer concerned with the intellectual or any domains, no? Or limited domains. Learners learn best when provided with lessons, activities, and strategies that are appropriate to their developmental levels. So their appreciation and judgment, the way they interpret life or the way they live life, no, is affected by those knowledges that they already acquired. It is affected by their experiences that they have from home, no? Or it is affected by the culture that they practice or even the community that they belong. So, all of these are influences on learning. So, always remember that. Next one, the social influences on learning. Kanina, developmental influences. Ngayon naman, social influences. So, social, the environment, the other people, online, or out, or any, any, anyone, or any factors that, uh, you deal with outside, no? Yung, yung interaction mo, the social interaction, okay? With anyone. That is what you call social influence. So, learning is influenced by social interactions, interpersonal relations, and communication with others. So, learner, learning is enhanced when a learner is given the opportunity to interact or to collaborate or to talk with others. So, it's either academically or any, I know, any informal talk with others, no? So, you can still, I know, you, your learning is enhanced, your personality is enhanced when you deal with other people. So, quality, personal relationship also increases learner's trust and self-care. So, alam mo yun, yung quality personal relationship mo sa, kat, sa sarili mo, no? So, it, I know, and then your, your quality personal relationship with other people, it will enhance or boost your trust and self-care. So, it increases your sense of belongingness and then you will realize, oh, I belong to this group even if I am different. Because remember, we are, we are all different from each other. 
but we can always belong to a certain group. Provide the learners a positive learning climate so that he will perform to the maximum. So I'm always saying you facilitate the learning learner or the learning and inspire and assist the learners in order to these learners to feel that they belong. And if it happens, they will perform to the maximum. No? So constant communication also is needed. No? Constant communication with them, constant communication with their fellow learners too. No? It will enhance their ability to deal with people and to learn from them. So if, it talk, if, if they're going to talk with other people or collaborate with other people, they will learn from them. Because remember that we learn from each other's experiences. Okay. So let us now move on with the last factor that is individual differences factor. So it's very important also that we have to uh, put it in our mind that in our classroom, our learners have our, our learners are coming from different places and they practice different cultures. They came from different races, di different languages. No, so always respect individual differences. No. So let's move on with the first factor, and this is now our 12th principle. Individual differences in learning. So learners have different strategies, approaches, and capabilities for learning that are capabil capabilities for learning that are a function of prior experience and heredity. So yeah, experience and heredity have a large uh, role in the individual differ differences, no? So, kaya tayo na iiba kasi magkakaiba tayo ng experiences because of the environment where we came from, the heredity that we have. Magkakaiba tayo dahil sa heredity, okay? So, we manage a group of learners. Remember this teacher, no? We manage a group of, group of learners that have different abilities and capabilities. Abilities and capabilities. So as educators, we need to be very sensitive to individual differences. I'm always telling this. So in order to attend to everyone's special needs, no? put it in your brain. Put in your brain. Plant in your brain that individual differences in learning is very important. And in order to, in order to appreciate this, you have to respect every individual. Okay? You acknowledge them. No, you embrace them. You understand them. Okay? This is what sh we should do as facilitators of learning. Thirteenth principle is individual differences in learning. So, so na ulite to. Let's move on. Fourteenth. 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 Is tr strategy. Wait, let me look on the let me look closely into the 13th. 13th, let's move on with the 13th strategy. Okay, here. 13th principle is learning and diversity. Yeah, learning and diversity. So it says here learning is most effective when differences in learners' linguistic, cultural, and social backgrounds are taken into account. Okay, so it is very important. So I repeat, the learning and diversity. So it is effective, the learning will become effective if you as a teacher will take into account the importance of differences in terms of cultural, language, and social background. So the same basic principle in the motivation and in giving your uh, no assessment, no, that always remember to acknowledge or put into that account the the what the individual differences that that they have so since our learners are coming from different cultures or they are different from each other it is expected that they have different strategies also no so we should be very careful in attending this one no we will improve and work harder to motivate them more and to let their curiosity linger longer, no? And of course, for them to achieve more. So, when learners perceive that their individual differences in abilities, backgrounds, cultures, and experiences are valued, what will happen? If they feel that they are valued, they are respected, they are accepted, no? And they are accommod... What do you call this one? They are accommodated, 
So, the task, the learning task that you are giving given to them will be is mostly what? Done. No? All the assessment activities, the lessons that you are going to present. So, their levels of achievement will be enhanced too because they feel that they belong in a certain group without any what discrimination okay so i repeat again in this in this 13th fact 13th uh, principle that is learning and diversity that we need to take into account the difference in the learners linguistics cultural and social background that is important and we're down to the last the 14th principle is standards and assessment okay setting appropriately high and challenging standards and assessing the learners as well as learning process including diagnostic process and outcome pro uh, outcome assessments are integral parts of the learning process no so assessment is equally important to the part of the learner as well as, well as the teacher why because if you are assessing your students, you will know if the strategy that you use is effective. No? So at the same time, you are also assessing yourself as a teacher. So if they got high scores, okay, then meaning to say your, your strategy was great, was effective. No? So the effectivity of your learning is measured with the assessment activities that was designed to cater every individual learner. So the activities that you have designed should cater to the objective and to the individual differences of the learners. It should be within the lesson that you have taught. No, Assessment of any kind will improve learners' self-appraisal. So, If you give a certain task or activity or an assessment to your students and they did well, then self-appraisal, they will feel that they are, they are more self-confident. No, They are confident because they got high scores and they understood the lesson and in the end they will be motivated to work harder so always remember that in giving assessment or yeah standard in assessments always think that number one your assessment should be covered by the objective by the lesson taught okay and consider the higher order of thinking okay in the College of Teacher Education, if we prepare exams, we should, it should always be let-based. However, because we are not seeing, seeing each other face-to-face, -face, we, always, you know, we always give you some essay questions for you to answer, no? or true or false. Or if it is quiz online, then we are giving the multiple choice or the let-based exam. Okay, so... I repeat, this assessment is very important because we are not just assessing our students, but also we are assessing ourselves if we the strategies that we have used is effective or not. Okay, so always remember, my dear Prof. Ed 5 students, the 14 principles of the the 14 principles of the learner-centered psychological no, that you have learned today o always remember it and then you try to practice it you do it no it's a buhay ito because it will help you develop a holistic learning and a holistic learner so there is no ano walang matitirang hole or butas doon sa learner mo if you are going to do all these processes no because these are very important in order for you to develop one holistic learner you have to observe or practice or take into consideration the 14 learner-centered psychological principles or in other words we call this lcp so for questions or inquiries please leave your message in the google classroom okay or send me in our GC. So there are two slides that uh, I was not able to edit, but I hope that you got the point. At least you have the, you know, you have the copy of the lesson. Please uh, go into the lesson or the lecture guide that I have sent you and then look into the slides that was not 
that were not edited. We have two slides, I guess. But at least I have already explained the, those parts. Okay. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for this wonderful time again, my dear Prof. and Fabi students. This has been your Ma'am Ash saying, dito sa ating classroom, lahat ay matututo kahit magkakalayo.